What's up, friends? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. We have a lot, a lot to catch up on. This video is going to be my luxury beauty favorites and fails from the months of February, but also January. As many of you guys know, I did move across the country at the end of January. I took a little bit of a break and we were not able to do a January favorites video. So we're gonna be catching up in this video, guys, okay? Because while I was away, I was testing out all of the new makeup products, all of the goodies, okay? And I'm gonna be sharing my thoughts with you here in this video. What were my favorites? What were my fails? As we get ready together creating this beautiful look, I have the Dior Dream Palette. I have the new Lisa Eldridge products, guys. I have some new foundations to talk about. We got some faves. We've got some fails. So if you want to hang out with me today and hear all of my thoughts and catch up, then keep watching. All right, I think we're ready. I'm going to put my hair back, especially because I'm going to start off with some skincare. I feel like ever since I've moved to Dallas, the weather has been all over the place. When we moved here, it was legit guys the coldest month of the year do not move when it's like 12 to 15 degrees out it just it's not very fun. It's not very fun, guys, okay? And ever since then, we've hit like every single point in the temperature spectrum. It was like 92 degrees the other day. Today, I think it's like 72. It's been in the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, you name it. And I feel like my skin is really trying to adjust to this weather. It's been very like dry, but also acne prone. So I'm really trying to get back into like a good routine. I've had redness. I've had like some hyperpigmentation. So I'm trying to treat the inflammation and just use some things that help with brightening. So you guys know I love the Dr. Dennis Gross LED mask. I was so excited when I unpacked this from the box because we were reunited and it's been great ever since. It is a little bit pricey. I got this one at Sephora. I think I bought it in the Sephora sale maybe like a year or two ago. I can't remember like when I first started my YouTube channel. And I do feel like it helps with reducing the redness and the inflammation. So I just pop this on my face for maybe like 10 or 15 minutes while I check my emails and I drink my coffee through like the little mouth area every single morning and I feel like this has been helping so I'm hopeful guys okay so this is my first favorite I will link that down below I try to look for deals on that mask sometimes you can get some good deals especially in the upcoming Sephora sale that might be a good thing to pick up but the other skincare favorites that I have right here is the new skincare from RMS I know I mentioned this in the beauty haul that I did like a week ago but they basically came out with they have the Lux cream the Cockadoo Luxe Creams is a really nice kind of like medium, medium moisturizer. It's not as heavy as like the La Mer, but I've been using this every single night. It's very moisturizing. Even better, they have this. This is the Cockadoo Beauty Oil. I guess I use this at night, but I also like to use it to prime my skin. So I'm gonna be putting a little bit on this so that the foundation just kind of like goes on really nicely. And then I also like to use the Hydration Mist. And this is cool because it's kind of like a water and oil combination. And then you like shake it up and it has the finest mist. I'll probably use this like at the end of the makeup. We'll see how it's looking, but I like to use this to kind of refresh my makeup, refresh my skincare throughout the day. I usually keep it on my desk. It's really great because my skin has been getting very dry and that just kind of helps. And because it has the oil in it, I feel like it doesn't just, you know, evaporate off of my face instantly. I feel like it leaves a little bit of moisture behind. So I'm gonna put just like a couple of little drops of the oil, the beauty oil. And I just feel like this kind of helps to like prep the skin just a little bit. And because I have had just like a lot of discoloration and stuff, I've also been using the, I mean, you guys already know I like this, the Radiant Serum in the shade Light Aura. This is the lightest one. It's winter right now, so I don't really need the tanner one that I bought the previous season. And I just kind of try and put this in the spots of my face that need a little bit of brightening, which is mostly right here at the tops of my cheeks. And this just gives me like a little bit of extra sun protection where I'm starting to see like some of those freckles pop up and I always get like hormonal breakouts up here. I don't know why, like right here on my face, on the upper right forehead, I always get hormonal breakouts. So this just adds like a little bit of like a base and that combo has been my go-to. And I will put my coupon code down below because it should work on the new skincare, I hope. It should work on the entire site so you can save 20% off. And then the final thing, I know there's like a lot of RMS here, but they sent me all of the skincare things and they also sent me this 
this, which is their lip balm. If you guys don't know, I love the lip lights, which are basically the same thing, but they're tinted. This is like the nighttime lip mask version of that, and it's called Lip Nights. Get it? Lip Nights? And it's, I mean, I wear it during the day too. It is like the most luxurious, richest lip balm I've ever tried. I usually use this and the Glossier Bomb com but this one is like even thicker and more nourishing and I love the scent of it I don't know it kind of smells like medicated vanilla I don't know it's not irritating or anything I just love the comforting smell so that's what I've been doing for skin prep and then for foundation this isn't new but it is new to me you guys saw I bought a couple more of basically all of the Chanel foundations that I didn't already own and I am slowly testing them the one that I've kind of been drawn to the past like two or three weeks since I got it is this one. This is the Vita Lumiere Aqua Ultra Light Skin Perfecting Sunscreen Makeup SPF 15. Now, I thought that this was gonna be like a really sheer tint type of situation, but a couple of you guys said in the comments of that haul video that I did, you said, I think it's gonna be different than what you think it's going to be. And actually, you guys were right. It's not like a dewy skin tint. I'm gonna put it on my face right now. See how it's like quite runny? It is a very, very very lightweight foundation that actually has a little bit more like a velvet matte type of texture. See, it actually does provide quite a bit of coverage, which I like because I have like all this acne and stuff right now. Maybe it's from the stress of moving as well, but I feel like this has done a really nice job of kind of covering up my imperfections, but it's still like really nice and light for every day. And especially if I pair it with the skincare, I feel like it kind of glides over the skin really nicely. So I feel like this is the kind of thing you could apply with your fingers, but I like to use a brush. That's just me. Did you guys see that Repper came out with new synthetic brushes? They're supposed to come today. I wanted to use them in this video, but they haven't come yet. I keep checking the mail, unfortunately. So I'll have to save those for another video, but I'll link them down below. I'm really excited to try them. Right now I'm just using the BK Beauty 101, which is also amazing. You guys know I love their synthetic synthetic brushes. So I'll just get like a nice little layer on of this. Actually, let me get in close here. Like a nice sunny day. So I hope that this is <laughs> showing up all right. And the shade that I have here is number 10 beige, which is normally what I wear. Something that is kind of like light and neutral. I'll have all these products linked in the description box down below along with the shades so you don't have to remember them. And then you guys know I like to make it clear that they are affiliate links. So when you shop through them, I do earn a small commission. So everything will be linked down below along with any like coupon codes I can get to save you all some money. By the way, if you are new here, hi, welcome. My name is Sophia and I help you shop for luxury. I spend my money so that you don't have to. And I love luxury beauty. I do a lot of new makeup reviews, fun and helpful guides. So if you love luxury beauty, hit that subscribe button to join our fam. We would love, love to have you. And with that, friends, let's get back to the rest of my favorites and fails. Okay, friends, so here you can see the foundation. You can see the coverage. It's not dewy. It's more like that natural to velvet finish. And it does a really good job of covering all of the little breakouts that I had. I feel like this is gonna be a really good summertime staple when it gets like really hot here in Texas and I want something lightweight, but also slightly mattifying. Now, I wanna call it a fail, okay? This is where I start talking about the fails from the past two months. And I haven't even reviewed this product yet. I think I will do a dedicated review because not everybody's gonna watch this video. But guys, I hate the Christian Louboutin foundation. I had to force myself to test this for like two weeks straight. And I don't think there was ever a time where this looked good on my face. I'm going to find a clip that I took like when I first started testing this so you guys can see. Every single time that I put this on my face, it got so dry, like so dry and crusty. It is so full coverage on me. And I think the other thing is like, it doesn't really provide, at least in my opinion, any like blurring or smoothing capabilities. There's nothing particularly special about the formulation. I much 
much prefer the Prada foundation to this and the Chanel. The Chanel, the one that I just put on, I feel like it's a really good kind of more lightweight alternative for those of us out there that are not used to or don't prefer something that is so full coverage and matte as this foundation. Like no skin peeks through at all and then it kind of just gets dried out. If you want something a little bit more lightweight, I definitely recommend checking this one out from Chanel or check out the Prada foundation. I know so many people like this. Like I'm not saying that it's bad. It just really didn't work out for me. I gave it a chance. It's like it really doesn't last nicely on my skin. I actually kind of want to return <laughs> kind of want to return it, but I don't know. Let me know if you still want a review of this. I know I'm so behind. There were a lot of things that I purchased that I just like couldn't catch up. I couldn't like unpack quick enough to review, but I don't know. I kind of still want to do a dedicated review of that foundation. But yeah, guys, I'm just like, I've been dying to call this out. So I'm just calling it out now. I hate the foundation. I don't recommend it. If you have a similar skin type to me, you know, maybe buy it somewhere that has a very generous return policy. For concealers, guys, I just have some oldies but goodies here. Okay, I've been wanting something that is a little bit more full coverage, a little bit more matte but not drying, and very, very brightening. So the two that I have been loving are the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Concealer and then throwback the Too Faced Born This Way. What is this called? Multi-use sculpting concealer. This one is in 2.5 and this one is in the shade Snow. This is a mini, by the way. I keep this in like my little kind of um, just kit that has like my brow stuff and little mini concealers stuff for travel. And yeah, this is basically what I've been using. Usually I'll do the, I feel like I need to get a new one of these. It's like almost done. I usually do the Charlotte Tilbury one like under the eyes and then I don't know, I do the Too Faced one more on my breakouts because the Charlotte Tilbury one, if you've never seen my review of this, it does have mica in it, which has kind of like a slight sparkly effect. And that is really great for under the eyes, but it's not as great for, you know, like on a pimple. I don't want my pimples to be sparkly and illuminated. I just kind of want them to be like brightened and covered up. And I feel like this concealer never lets me down. It also goes really well with these kind of like more velvet foundations that are very, very trendy right now. I feel like it's been a good companion to those wear tests. All right, nice. I feel better already. I'm going to put a little bit of the Too Faced just kind of like on my breakouts, kind of like blend it out with the Angie Hot and Flashy A506 from BK Beauty. Okay, so for bronzers, these are the two that I've been using. Number one, you guys know, I just reviewed the new YSL bronzers. I have the two lightest shades. I think this is what I'm going to be using today, just so you guys can see more demos with them. And then I also have really been liking the new Dior Forever Glow Maximizers in the bronze shade. This one is my favorite. You actually can layer this on top of your other bronzer if you want just something that's like a little bit glowier, almost like a bronzer topper. Maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll do that. Let's see how it looks. But yeah, I really like this one. I compared these to the Charlotte Tilbury and the Rare Beauty in my review. Where is my brush? I'm going to pop on first the lighter color of the YSL powder. And I told you guys in my review, and I'll say it again here, I really like the lighter shade and some of you guys said you really enjoyed it as well if you're like this pale in the winter then I think you're going to like this because it doesn't give you that kind of like bobblehead effect where your face is just like so much tanner or glowier or blushier than the rest of your body and it just blends over everything so so well it's gonna be more of a matte finish okay so if you're like going for more of that mattified look with the matte foundations that are coming out now then I think think you are going to like this. And now I'm going to go into the second shade here and I just do this on kind of like the high points right there. Do a nice little dusting. So yeah, these are a winner for me. I know they keep going in and out of stock. Like, I don't know what this game is about, guys. Like when you launch a product, YSL and other luxury brands, just make it available so I could know where it's gonna be. You know, don't put it up on Nordstrom for like two seconds. All of the shades were available in stock last night when I was getting the review ready for this morning. And then I wake up and it says that everything is out of stock. So I don't know what's going on, guys. But like, don't worry about it because these are products probably going to be coming to Sephora. Like they're probably going to be at every department store where they sell YSL. So I wouldn't worry about it too, too much. 
All right, we are bronzed. Let's move on to blush. And I've had two go-tos for blush. The first one has been, surprise, surprise, the other Dior Forever Glow Maximizer that I picked up, which is in the rosy shade. I really like this one for kind of like more of that pinky tone. And then this is a throwback, okay? Comment down below if you have this blush palette, but I've been trying to shop my stash and I packed with me during my move just like a couple of things that I hadn't used in a really long time that I really wanted to get some use out of. Do you guys remember this? hourglass blush palette. I flippin' love this thing. You can tell that I use mostly this one. I kind of mix these two together, and then if I want something a little bit more vibrant, I'll go into these. I feel like I've used this so many times, and it looks like I've barely touched it. But yeah, comment down below if you remember this. This was the Ambient Lighting Blush Quad Ghost. I would love to see more of this from Hourglass. I feel like, I don't know, I don't like a lot of the combinations that they do nowadays, but I really enjoyed using Using that, so that's been a fave. However, I think I'm gonna use the newer product here just so we can get some more demos in. You can no longer get the Hourglass palette, unfortunately. So I just like to spread this kind of like on the back of my hand there. And then I'll take, just gonna take the BK Beauty brush once again, kind of works for everything. Layer that on top and that's gonna give us a little bit more of a glow. Do we wanna mix? the rosy and the bronze shades together. I don't think I've ever done this before. Let's, let's do it. Let's do it. We'll do it live, okay? Okay. All right. Oh, it kind of made like a beautiful rose color, like a bronzy rose. I mean, I guess that would make sense. Oh, I love it. This looks very pillow talk to me. Although I don't think this wouldn't be a match. It's more of like a rosewood tone. Oh my gosh, I love this. Look, I created a new color, guys. Try mixing them together. Put them on the back of your hand, try mixing them together, and you can kind of make like a new shade out of them. So I just quickly did my brows off camera, and before we get into the eyes, friends, I forgot, I did have one blush fail, and this was also sent to me by RMS. Sorry, RMS, but I don't think that I like these, and I'll explain. These are called the Lip to Cheek, and I think what these are are supposed to be is like a cream blush that you can also use on your lip. And I really like the shades. This one is called Beloved or Beloved, however you want to pronounce it. The shade is absolutely gorgeous. I just kind of swatched it on the back of my hand so you can see. The problem is that these are coconut oil based and I feel like because they are so emollient, they almost kind of remove any sort of foundation that I have underneath, especially if you're wearing more of like a matte finish one, like the one that I'm wearing today, it's just gonna kind of remove all of the coverage that you got. So I prefer these on the lips. I think they look really pretty on the lips. You get some of that like moisturization. They're very emollient because they have the coconut oil in them, which to my knowledge is like a very heavily refined coconut oil. It's supposed to be like very high quality. At least that's what the brand says. But I don't really love these as a cream blush. I much prefer the powder blushes from RMS. As you guys know, I love those. And I really like the Living Luminizer, which is basically the same thing, but it's a highlighter. But I don't know, guys, for whatever reason, it just works and you only need a very little bit for it to look good and do its job. Whereas with the blushes, I feel like I'm going over my whole cheek and it just kind of I don't know, like it just kind of rubs away. I think you guys know what I mean. But anyway, we are gonna move on to the eye look. I'm so excited, guys. I never got to review for you all the Dior Dream Palette. So that is what we're gonna be using today. I've really been enjoying this palette and it is still available, even though it is limited edition. So let me demo this for you. And while I demo it, I am going to be using some of the new Sonia G Traditions set. Not only do I have the main set, the Kayaki Kakishi, but I also got the select set as well. It's basically very similar design, like same handle, but she introduced some shapes with just some more premium fibers just for collector types like me. Okay, guys, they're absolutely amazing, so I'm gonna do my job to use as many of these as possible in this review with the Dior Dream Palette. First, I'm gonna be using the TS2. It's a little small shader brush, and I'm gonna go into the center shade. This is 
such a beautiful shade. It looks like it's gonna be just like a basic beige that we see in a lot of other palettes, but it's not. Look, it's this gorgeous iridescent neutral color. And I wanted to go in with this first just to kind of show you like how pretty of a one and done this is when I didn't have that much time. When I was just kind of going through the move and unpacking, I would kind of dip into this shade and put it all over the lid, put it all over the lower lash line. Actually, let me switch to a different brush. This is the TS1, a little bit more precise and flatter. So here is what it looks like. So pretty and iridescent. Next up, I'm gonna go into the soft gold. And I love this one because, sorry for the mess on my hand. Hopefully you guys can see that. It's just so pretty and reflective. Like it has a little bit of creaminess to it. I like that the gold has a little bit more of an impact. So I'm just going to kind of blend that over the outer half of the eye to bring a little bit more like brightness to the lid. Next, I'm gonna dip into the coral shade right here. That's the most vibrant one in the palette. And I'm using my favorite brush in the series. This one is the T5. And this is such a beautiful kind of like fluffy blending brush for like a light dusting of these shadows or just hitting up the crease, get a little crease action in there. And I think that this kind of brush is great as well because it makes it so that it's not like so pink and so coral. You get more of like that diffuse like halo effect. Blend that in, get a little bit of like a coral vibrance. I know that this palette is a little bit warmer, but most of the other palettes that have been coming out, I feel like they've been kind of neutral to cool tone. So if you wanted something more pigmented, a little bit more vibrant, a little bit more like fun, I wouldn't call this like super colorful because you have some good neutrals in there. But if you were looking for something different from Dior, I recommend this palette because so many of the other ones they've been coming out with are just kind of like the same old thing, like pinks and peaches, meh. So that's why I've been drawn to this one. Next, I am taking the T1 and dipping into this purpley tone shade. And this is a nice little flat, precise brush. So I'm gonna kind of go here along the outer upper lash line and just kind of create like a little bit of a, a little bit of a wing that I'm, that I'm gonna blend it out a bit more. You also can use these pointier brushes in the set. We've got the T3 and the TS3. So this is from the select set and I just love, I love the bristles here. I love the contrast of that. So pretty. Actually, let's use that one. This is more of like a chubby pencil brush and it's kind of good for this purpose if you want to like build a little bit of depth just in the outer corner. I'm just taking the T4, which is a smaller blending brush, and I'm going to blend around the edges here just to kind of blur those vibrant colors. I just went back into my little Too Faced concealer and I'm using this to then like sculpt the eye up a little bit. That's what this concealer is really good at doing, like these types of things where you kind of need to like snatch up the look. And you'll notice like, I don't think that this palette looks super orange. It's more of like a coral and like purpley tones. And then you have the two neutrals here. This one right here, I'm gonna show you guys next. This is more of a topper shade. I'll put it here on my finger, get like a good amount. See, like it has a bit of a tone, but like not, it's not super pigmented. It's more of like a texture, okay? So I'm gonna go in with this little flat brush from Esam. This is a W21. I use this just to add like little bits of sparkle. Like it's not super pigmented. I feel like I kind of wish it was like even more sparkly. I don't know, gave a little something something. That was the one shade in the palette that kind of like surprised me. I just really layer it on top of everything just to give like a little something extra, that's all. All right, so this is what we got going on so far with the Dior Dream palette. We have a nice mix of kind of like creamsicle, a little bit of pearly iridescence. We have the gold in there. We have the little purpley tone in there. I'm liking it so far, but we are not done, my friends. I need to let you guys know my thoughts on the new Lisa Eldridge products. Of course, I picked these up. I've been testing them out for a couple days now, and I definitely have some thoughts. So I have the Kitten Flick Liquid Eyeliner and the Kitten Lash. That's what it's called. Yes, Kitten Lash Mascara. Let's kick things off with the eyeliner. I love a good liquid eyeliner. 
slider, guys. And the first thing that I noticed when I opened up the product, which I wasn't super surprised by because she did say it in her product description, but the first thing I noticed is how small the tip is. It is a felt tip. I usually prefer more of like a brush tip. I love the KVD tattoo liner. I know I still use that, guys. I like the Florisys one. I like a lot of like the Japanese ones. So I'm not as used to a felt tip, mostly because I just feel like they're too big and chunky. Like I don't get as much control. So I was very intrigued by this one because it is so small and petite. I feel like it does help with that situation where you make the wing too big and then you're trying to even it out. And then all of a sudden you have like these huge wings on the corners of your eyes. Like you're just ready to take flight into the day. That's happened to me. I don't know if it's happened to you, but that's a problem that I have. I feel like with this one and guys, this is like my worst nightmare right now. I got to apply this on camera, liquid eyeliner. So bear with me <laughs> while I talk. I feel like with this one, because it's so small, I love that you can get so close to the lash line. It's a good liquid eyeliner. It is really good. Like if you just want to do something very, very natural, I feel like it's easy to do. And if you just want kind of like a baby wing, this is the eyeliner to do it with. I will say it does take a little bit of getting used to, however, because this is so small and short and petite, I do think that it is best suited for kind of like more that tight lining technique that I just did or the kitten lash, just like a really tiny little baby lash. You basically can use this like you would a writing utensil. It gives you a little bit more control to do those smaller details. Now, if you want to do more of a bigger wing, I don't know if this is the one that I would go for actually. I really love it, but I feel like for larger wings, I prefer a tip that is longer because it has more of like a curve to it. Think of like a calligraphy brush where, you know, people do those like sweeping motions and depending depending on the pressure that they put on the brush, they're able to get different thicknesses and variations of the swoosh that they're trying to paint on the paper. Does this make sense, guys? So I feel like if this is the brush and this is my eye, I'm able to kind of use the length to really like create that perfect curve. It's not the easiest thing, right? It's liquid eyeliner. It's not like the easiest thing to do, but I feel like I prefer that more kind of painted on type of motion and length of the tip for that type of style. I hope this makes sense, guys. It's like kind of hard to describe. This one I think is good if you just want to do like a little, a little baby guy right here on the edge and you don't want it to get messy. But I'm just, I don't know, I'm so used to using the length of the tip to create the shape that if I wanted something longer, I feel like it would be better to have a longer tip to the brush for that style of wing. I also like that I can get right here in the inner corner and it won't like bleed into the entire corner of my eye. I really like that as well. So overall guys, this is a win for me. It is a favorite for me. I'm excited because I don't have something like this. I feel like some people thought that this was a very boring release. I don't think it's boring. I think this is a great like everyday staple. I love a good liquid eyeliner. I used to wear liquid eyeliner literally every single day in like college and my early 20s and I feel like I feel like it needs to make a comeback forgive me friends but I did the other wing off camera otherwise we would have been here all day all right and before I get into the mascara this is usually where I will go in with that RMS mist just to add like a little bit of like hydration kind of like melt everything together it's just got like a nice nice fine little mist kind of let that sink in there and now i'm going to move on to the mascara and my thoughts here i'll just tell you right off the bat it's not a bad mascara but it's kind of a fail. It's kind of a fail for me. I won't be repurchasing it, so that's why I'm kind of calling it a fail, but it's not a bad mascara at all. I actually really like the wand of this because it's not too bushy. It's more of like that rubbery style of wand, which I like. I don't need it to be curved, but it is nice. I understand some people, they like a little bit more of like curl and lift. I don't really have that issue. I usually like to get a lot of length and a decent amount of volume with my mascaras. The problem that I have with this this one. It just doesn't build up all that much. It's not very volumizing. It's very much if you want, you know, it's kitten lash. It's supposed to be natural, flirty, fluffy. It's not like mega volume, Lisa Eldridge, whatever. Like this is kind of her style of makeup, but I'm just saying personally for me, it's not going to be my favorite. No matter how many coats of this I put on, I just feel like I can't really build it up. I will legit put on like four coats. So if you 
you pick this up and you're having the same problem, if you like a little bit more volume, I would recommend just letting each coat dry. You don't just kind of swap eyes. Maybe wait a quick second, put on some lip balm or do something else with your makeup, like cover up some blemishes or whatever, and then come back and do another coat. The other thing with this mascara is that the longevity is decent, but it's not the best. It's not what I like. I honestly like bulletproof mascaras. I really like the Tower 28, the Cali Ray. I like the Hourglass Unlocked. All of those are very similar to this in terms of like the brush, but they give a lot more length and volume and they have a lot more longevity. They really don't move. And with this one, I just noticed that, you know, I get a little bit of smudging like right there at the end of the day. And then I also have a little bit like on at the top of my lid right there on the brow bone where a lot of times when I emote and smile, my lashes will kind of like touch and rub against that area. You know, there's like a slight flaking. So is it bad? No, it's just like not a 10 out of 10 for me. Everybody has that mascara that they like. And I'm glad that she launched a mascara because I think she needed it in her collection. And I think that it's very on brand. So, you know, it's just not for me. It's not my favorite. Comment down below because when I posted about this on the community board, it was very mixed. Like some of you guys were like, oh, I'm so excited to test this out. Some people thought it was the most boring release ever. Some people had gotten it and they loved it. Some people got it and they thought the same thing as me. So it's like, you know, to each their own. It's like these two products that like everybody has very specific preferences for. So let me know what you think. I would love to know. All right, almost done, almost done friends. Bear with me. I know this video is probably like a million years long, but hey, we have a lot to catch up on, okay? Two months worth of favorites and fails. And I wanted to do, before we get to the lips, just like a quick little speed round of my other eyeshadow favorites and fails, all right? I only have three here, so it's not really that many. But my first favorite, which I'm so sorry, but this sold out before I could even haul it for you guys, let alone do a review. But I really did enjoy the Chanel Eclat de Nuit palette. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. There's just something about this palette where, I don't know, it's just so like smoky and soft and sultry and elegant just gives me those you know I'm in like a Parisian jazz bar type of vibe this has been my kind of like dinner date going out in the evening type of palette it is beautiful I would have liked to see more pigmentation from this shade I, I would have liked these two shades to be more different from each other but that being said I don't really have another Chanel palette like this and I kind of liked how I don't know I liked how cool tone this was but in a really interesting taupey grazy way and this shade right here has kind of like a green tinge to it as well I don't know I hate it when Chanel does all of these limited editions and then we can't get it but yeah I did really enjoy that I wanted to do a review but you can't get it so I don't I don't really know if it's worth doing I also really did like the Chantecaille sea turtle palette in the warm shade I know I told you guys in my other video I didn't like the cool one at all I'm sorry Chantecaille <laughs> they did gift it to me which was really nice I bought this warm one and this has kind of been my go-to when I just don't really have a lot of time to do a day look I kind of just reached for this because I didn't have all of my makeup with me this was like my go-to neutral palette. The last one here, which I'm kind of, I'm calling this a fail because I really don't think this palette is as good as a lot of people said it was. It's the Tom Ford Iconic smoke. The formula, the creme formula feels a lot drier than other the other palettes that I have. It feels a little bit drier and so it's just really not all that pigmented and I don't mind, you know, like the Chanel palette is really soft and not super pigmented, but there's something about this that is just it's not bad. I don't hate it. It's just, I don't think it's worth the $90. It's like a little bit dusty. I keep trying to build up the darker shades. I don't really get that. I try and layer on the sparkly shade. And that one is just like not that impressive. Like it's not as cool as the one in the Chanel palette. And on top of all of that, the longevity sucks. I get creasing with this as well. So I don't absolutely despise it. I've kind of been wearing this for night out looks as well, but I 
wouldn't wear this for the full day. This is the kind of thing where it's like, oh, I'm going out to dinner for like two, three hours and then I'm gonna come back. It's like a nice sophisticated navy smoky type of look, but like I wouldn't count on it really lasting longer than that. So mm, I'm sorry. Maybe I can do a demo with it. Comment down below if you want me to demo that or do a review, but personally, like I just didn't think it was all that great. Oh wait, I lied. I forgot to talk about the Chanel palettes. Okay, so there's two more palettes that are in these faves. I need to give a shout out to the Chanel Spring 2024 collection palettes. We have Rivage and Coral Treasure. I won't talk too much about them because I already posted a full review of these, but these were my favorite pieces from the collection. I love them. Rivage is a little bit, you know, more subtle with the pop of blue and then Coral Treasure. I like just a little bit more, has a little bit more like vibrancy to them. I also wanted to show you guys just a quick little side by side here of Coral Treasure and the Dior Dream palette. Coral Treasure ends up being more vibrant, more, more coral, more pinky toned. Whereas the Dior Dream palette, I think that this is a good alternative. If you kind of wanted to like mix in some neutrals and you get some more depth from the purple, like I did here in this look. So sorry about that. Had to add two more in there. I felt like they deserved a shout out. And this is what the look is looking like so far, friends. We're gonna finish things up with my lip favorites from the past two months. Hands down, the two lippies that I've been wearing the most over the past two months have been these from Shantakai. These are the lip cheeks from the Sea Turtle Collection. I love these. I love the cute packaging with the turtle and the colors and yes, they are expensive, but they're very beautiful and they're really good for every day. Hence why these are the ones that I've been wearing the most. The two shades that I have here are Rosea and then Starflower. Rosea is a little bit more of like a brighter warm tone coral. Starflower is kind of like a good nudie red. Good if you want something just kind of like really basic, goes with everything. And I pop these on my lips when, you know, I sit down for Zoom calls. I put them in my purse when I'm heading out the door. They're so easy. They're so beautiful. They really make the lips look just like juicy and elegant. I don't know, I love them. And then the other kind of more sheer product that I've been wearing so, so much since I got it is the Rouge Coco Balm from Chanel in the shade Anemone. This is also kind of like a warm corally shade, but as you can see, it's gonna be like a little bit more sheer and even more orange than the Rosea from Chantecai. It seems like it would be similar, but it's not. And it's actually the one that I'm gonna put on my lips today just to kind of go with like this warmer, more corally eye look. Absolutely love it. Ooh, and then I did pick up some more like colorful matte lipstick favorites, okay? I can't wear them every day, but when I do, these are the ones that are just, just bringing me joy. I have the Hermes Summer 2024 lipsticks. It's hard to choose which one I like the most. I don't know. I definitely don't think you need all of them, but I think that this one, Rose Pop. I think this one is probably one of the most unique that Hermes have done. It's really hard, it's really hard. Where's the other one I wanna show you guys? The Rouge Cinétique. Oh my gosh, this is so good as well. Oh, they're so beautiful! It really puts me in like the summertime mood. But another one that I think you guys should keep your eye on, it's actually sold out on Sephora right now, but I'll link it down below. Hopefully it comes back in stock. I'm, I'm sure it will. This is a another one of the Prada Soft Matte Lipsticks. I picked up, I think I picked up two more shades and this is the one that I liked the most. I wore this on Valentine's Day, I wanna say. This color is called Granato, okay? It is just the most lovely, soft, kind of cherry red. It looks very bright, right? But because it's that kind of, you know, soft matte, velvet, kind of cloud-like type of formula that we get from these Prada lipsticks, which is so good, you can sheer this baby out. So it gives you that kind of like stained, like bitten type of look to the lips. You can just put a little bit in the center and then kind of like blur it out. It's so good. And then I really like to use these because they have more of that, um, I don't know if powdery is the right word because it sounds like they're gonna be drying and they're not. They're great for cream blush, okay? So I will put this on the lip and I'll put this on the cheeks, just a little bit, just a little bit that gives that romantic flush. And then I'll do like a bare eye with mascara. It's so, 
so good oh my gosh all right and believe it or not friends i think that's it i think we got through all of my favorites and fails from the past two months comment down below and let me know what you think of this look let me know what you thought of the products that i showed in today's video if there were any fails that i had did they work out for you and vice versa your opinion is worth just as much as mine so leave me a little comment down below to say hello and share all of your thoughts if you like this video please don't forget to give me a big thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already and with that friends i hope that you see some beauty in your day and i will see you in my next one goodbye